I'm adding support for a new type of machine learning model to machine learning for kids. So in this video, I'm going to do a run through of the kind of project that this will enable. Now, the new model type I've described here as predicting numbers. What we're talking about is regression, a machine learning model that can predict uh, a continuous output variable based on some training data. Before we start training, uh, let's look at the example project I'm going to be using. I've set up a scratch template for a, a bouncing ball simulation that's going to start a ball at a random location uh, with a random speed and then fire it. And what you can see here is it's recording the x-coordinate of the first place where the ball hits the ground. Now there's lots of variables we could use here. I've set up some variables in the scratch project for things like gravity and bounciness. Um, but for this we're going to start simple. We're going to look at the starting location expressed as xy coordinates and actually I've got the x always the same for every time the ball uh, fires so actually the y is the only thing that's variable and the starting speed expressed as uh, x and y sort of horizontal speed and vertical speed and we're going to use those three input variables to predict the first bounce that output variable. So let's set that up. So we need to add columns. So I'm, I'm sort of representing this as a spreadsheet in a tabular way. So I've got that start y coordinate and then the speed expressed as uh, speed x for the horizontal speed and speed y for the vertical speed. And what we want to predict is the location of the first bounce. So I just need to tick to say that this is the output variable. Now I'm ready to start collecting my training data. So for that, I'm going to go back into Scratch. I've got some new blocks down here to help me work with my project. But first, I'm going to open that template project again. And I'm going to modify it so that this time it starts recording those uh, variables for every run of the simulation. So I'm going to use the Add Training Data block to do this. I've got the variables already here, so I just need to drag them in. As I mentioned, I'm not varying the initial x coordinate, but that could be an interesting way to extend the project um, by adding that as a new variable, but for now I'm leaving that out. So now I just need to run the simulation again. Each run of the simulation will capture a new row in my training data. And if we switch over to the training tool, we can see what that looks like. So here are my first three runs. I've got starting coordinates and starting speed and the location of the first bounce. So I just need to run that a bunch of times to collect enough examples to train a model that can start making predictions. So let me run that a few times now. So that's run a dozen or so times now. So that's enough to start seeing how we can use this. So switching back to the training tool, if I refresh the page, you can see my 13 examples that I've captured from my Scratch project. And we can use these to train our first regression model. So if I click on the button, it takes a brief moment to uh, get the model ready, and I can start testing that. So let's get some new variables to test it. These were the coordinates and the speed for the simulation I just interrupted, so let's give these a try. And you can see here that the model has predicted that the x-coordinate for the first bounce would have been roughly um, 140. So the model has predicted that the first bounce will have been over on the right hand side where x equals 140. So if we can predict where the ball is going to go, where the ball will first bounce, then we can use that to try and catch the ball. So I've got a second sprite uh, that I've called Catcher, and we're going to use the prediction from our machine learning model to move that sprite um, so that it's ready to catch the ball when it reaches the ground. So I'm just going to drag these same variables from before in. So we're going to use the starting position and the starting speed to make our prediction. This block will give me the prediction for the x-coordinate of the first bounce. So I can use this value to move my sprite into the right place. I don't need to change the y-value because I know the first bounce will always be on the ground. Um, I can change the speed of how quickly I want to move my sprite into the right location. And I'm going to use the prediction to set the x-coordinate. So let's give it a try. If I click on the green flag, it starts a new simulation, and this time it will move the bat to the right place. And even with only a dozen or so examples, it's not too bad. It's not getting every single uh, prediction correct, but it's getting a few of them correct. So it's showing the, what's possible here, even with a very small amount of training data. 
It's not as accurate as I would like, so I want to collect a lot more training examples. So I'm going to stop it making predictions for a bit and leave this running so that it's just collecting uh, training data so that I can use this to improve the accuracy of my regression model. So this has been running for a little while now. I trained that first model with 13 training examples. So let's see how many examples I've got now. If I go back into my list of training data, you can see that I've now got over double that. I've collected 40 examples. So I'm going to modify the project so that at startup, I train a new machine learning model using the latest data that's been collected. So every time I run this, it will hopefully be a little bit better. So I can use this block to train a model, and I just need to wait for the model to finish training before I continue. So I use the wait until uh, model is ready to use. So now every time I click on the green flag, I'll get a new updated model with all of the data I've collected so far. And I just need to um, reattach that so that it's making predictions again. Move that out of the way. So let's give that a try and see with just over double the amount of training data, what difference that makes to the accuracy of the model. The model still isn't as accurate as I would like. With a relatively small number of examples, it is still making several mistakes, although it does make a few more catches. I want to see how much better we can make this, so I'm going to collect a lot more training examples to see what difference that makes. So like before, I'm going to um, detach this so that it stops trying to make predictions, and this time I'm going to leave it running, collecting lots of examples um, to see what difference that makes to the project. I've left this running for a little while so we can see how it behaves uh, when the model is trained with a, a large number of training examples. So if we switch back to here, you can see I've collected 156 examples of the simulation running. It's difficult just by eyeballing the data to try and get a feel for what the pattern is here. I certainly, just by looking at it, can't see any correlation between um, these three input variables and, and where the ball ends up bouncing. But the machine learning model is going to do a lot better than I can. So going back into Scratch, I'll stop this, um, reattach this so we can see the model making predictions again. And as before, when I click on the green flag, it's going to train a new model um, with all of those 156 examples to get us started with. And as you can see, it does much better. I find this really impressive. It's certainly not perfect, and it does miss the occasional ball. With only those three input variables, it does do what I find a, a remarkably good job of, of predicting where the ball is going to go. Now we could make this more challenging. You know, I mentioned we could add uh, the x, the starting x coordinate into the mix to, to add a bit more complexity and randomize where the ball starts off. Um, and there's lots of other things we could vary as well. We could have uh, a second type of ball um, with a different bounciness variable and then get the model to predict how different types of ball behave and, and where they bounce. We could vary that gravity variable and get the model to, to be able to predict in different environments where the ball will bounce. But even with this sort of first simple version before we try um, changing things, I think it's a really nice example of, of how regression behaves and how it can be used. I haven't measured the accuracy of this model, but just by watching the simulations uh, play out, it looks really impressive to me. It does seem to be catching uh, the majority of the balls, and even when it misses, it was in the right sort of area. What else could students do with these training examples that they've collected? As you can see, I've added this download CSV button so they could open the training examples they've collected in something like Excel and maybe do some graphs or visualizations to help them understand what the model that they've created is doing. CSV files also let them get training data from other places other than just Scratch. The Boston housing data set is kind of a classic in regression. It's um, collecting a bunch of variables uh, and using that to predict uh, house prices. Probably not a great primary school project, but it shows the, the level we can take that to, that you can get some really complex data sets 
um, and use that still in, in a sort of training tool environment, in a scratch environment. So if I sort of show this, I won't go deep into this one because this probably doesn't make a great school project, but it shows that if you can go and find uh, tabular numeric data, you can train some really complex models in the same way that I've shown um, with a really simple bouncing ball model. That's probably enough for now. This is the kind of thing I've been trying this new feature out on, but I'm really keen to hear ideas of, of what else you think uh, students might use this for.